Hey guys, I hope I'm finding everyone well, even if you're bored at home, and but you're healthy. I am so happy for that. And hello to you. Hey, I'm Elmira Hinton, the RN Health Coach, and I just wanted to stop in. Let me move my microphone over so you can hear me better. I am really thrilled to let you guys know that on Saturday, May 16th, Saturday, May 16th, um, we will begin the next, um, not just 30 days, but six weeks of getting healthy. Six weeks of getting healthy. So if you're interested or want more information, I'm going to be posting some things. But in the meantime, I'll be posting some things later than, later this week. But in the meantime, if you um, want more information, obviously you can send me a direct message or comment on this video and I'll answer you. But I'll be putting out more information about the upcoming six weeks Get healthy. It's going to start on a Saturday, May 16th. And it's all about getting healthy, getting that mind right, and getting that nutritional information that you need, that support that you need, so that you can get healthy. That is what's so important about this really um, interesting time that we're living in right now. No matter what happens, uh, being in your best state of health is the way that you not only survive, but you thrive. So uh, be sure to. Uh, get the information or um, fill out the application uh, and start the uh, six-week Get Healthy plan that starts May 16th. That is a Saturday. We're going to start on Saturday. I'll do the first uh, live then. We'll have introductions. We'll be doing contests, which is kind of a great time. And that's all going to start Saturday, May 16th. Um, so again, for those of you that haven't met me and you're going, who is this on my timeline? My name is Omira Hinton, just like it says below here. I am the RN Health Coach. I support those, uh, mainly women, uh, and those who are pre-diabetic and type 2 diabetic that want to relieve themselves uh, of those chronic health conditions, get their blood sugars under control, um, you know, and... Uh, lessen the amount of medication that they're taking, or even eliminate, you know, and this is all working with your healthcare provider, obviously. Um, this is to help you be accountable and to understand what you need to do to get healthy. So um, even, you know, if you're taking meds and stuff like that, it's your responsibility to know what's going on with those medications and to have that conversation with your physician or your healthcare practitioner uh, that you want to get healthy. And the thing about it is we aren't doing anything wild. We aren't doing anything wild. We're going to be learning a lot, working together, uh, making commitments, you know, doing things like that, eating lots of healthy fruits and vegetables and meats, you know, if you're a meat eater. So, you know, if there's any issue with that in your life, then, you know, that's more of a problem that even I can deal with. But um, the six week Get Healthy plan will be starting Saturday, May 16th. OK, so um, I hope you guys are, you know, are staying healthy. You know, only going out when you when you need to, you know, doing your social distancing, you know, uh, wearing a mask. The thing about, you know, wearing a mask, obviously, is it's trying to hold back your own personal uh, germs. OK, um, one of the things that you guys know that sometimes can drive me crazy, you know, my background is healthcare. care. Uh, my last uh, assignment, um, I was the, the dialysis uh, nurse manager. And so we had a lot of strict protocols about um, the use of, um, of of personal protection as far as, you know, germs and things like that are concerned and, um, and, and staying healthy, okay? So when you're wearing a mask, you don't get to touch your face, okay? That's still a no-no. You don't get to touch your face, okay? Because if you're worried about, you know, something getting in or around and it's on the mask, if you touch your face, then it's then on your hand. So if you touch your face or you touch your mask, you need to hand sanitize, okay? You need to hand sanitize. So I just see so many people out and about. And, it, you know, it's fine, you know, if you're not wearing one, but then... Don't chat a whole lot. Make sure you keep your social distancing. Make sure you clean your surfaces. Make sure you clean your hands, okay? But even when you wear a mask, when you touch it to take it off or whatever, to put it into a receptacle, you got to hand sanitize, okay? Because what's ever on that mask then gets on your hands, okay? So put the mask away or toss the mask out or whatever you're going to do with that mask. Preferably, uh, you know, put it in a plastic container or something, 
uh, to secure it so that if something is on the outside of it or on the inside from you, that it's not spreading around everywhere, okay? Minimize your conversations when you're wearing a mask, okay? Thanks for the thumbs up. I'm not sure who that is, but thanks for the thumbs up. Minimize your conversations when you're out. So if you're not wearing a mask, you really need to be quiet because your, you know, your germs and stuff are spewing out from your mouth. And, you know, you always want to cover your, hey, Rixie, you always want to cover your, you know, cover your, uh, your cough or anything like that. And obviously cover if you're sneezing, you know, in the elbow, get a tissue up, toss it, hand sanitize. Okay. Um, and if you're wearing a mask, shh, if you're talking a whole lot behind your mask, your own saliva and spit, you know, that you're talking behind your mask is breaking down your mask. It's allowing things to pass through. So you should really be quiet when you're wearing a mask. And if you're not wearing a mask, you should even be quiet then also because you don't want, you know, your germs and stuff flying out. So don't think of a mask as some kind of metal protection that it, you know, that it that it's serving you. It's the combination of social distancing, uh, hand sanitizing, you know, and minimizing your your activities when you're when you're going outside. Okay, that's very very important. It's not just one thing; it's a combination of things. This particular virus is very vi virulent. Okay, and you think, well, what does that mean? Okay, HIV, you know, in was it 1984 or something like that? I was a nurse then and uh, in labor and delivery. And that's when we had to deal with HIV. It, you know, HIV was everywhere. We couldn't find enough gloves then, you know. Uh, so, but the HIV virus is very, very fragile. It can only live on a surface about two minutes, okay? Whereas this COVID-19, they're, they're finding that it could survive uh, like 90 minutes, okay, before it needs a host. It needs to get to the surface that it needs uh, to entertain so that it can proliferate, okay? So it can stay on a hard surface or something for 90 minutes is what is what I'm hearing. Uh, also, in relation to that, to give you some other background on that, hepatitis B, which I had to deal with a lot in dialysis, hepatitis B can last on a surface 30 days, Okay, can last on the surface 30 days. So we really had to clean uh, diligently if we had a patient with hepatitis B, okay? This just to show you, you know, you're talking about 90 minutes with this COVID-19, HIV, two minutes on a surface. It's very, very fragile. So depending on how, um, on how resilient a particular virus or bacteria is, that's, you know, uh, how you need to do your diligence, okay? So if you're going to wear a mask, okay, if you're going to wear a mask, put the mask on, adjust it, make sure hand sanitize, okay? If you're out and about and it starts to get loose and you adjust your mask, your hands are then contaminated. You need to hand sanitize at that point, okay? When you touch your mask, you have to hand sanitize before you consider yourself clean again, okay? When you take it off and put it in its receptacle, whether you're throwing it out or you're putting it in plastic bag because you're going to take it home and wash it to reuse it, when you touch that mask and put it in that receptacle, you need to hand sanitize, okay? And it just drives me crazy when I see people out and they're wearing it below their nose and, you know, they're taking it off to talk and then putting it back on. No, 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 okay? First of all, conversation should be minimized because that allows things to float in air. When we're talking, we're pushing air out. You know, we're pushing, if you're a carrier, then you're pushing the virus out. So keep your conversations to a minimum. And if you're wearing a mask and you're doing a lot of talking behind the mask, remember you're pushing uh, your own uh, your own air uh, behind that mask. You're pushing it out through the mask. Remember bacteria, particularly viruses, are microscopic viruses can't even be seen with a simple microscope. That's how fine they are. That's why wearing um, these homemade masks, they stop your saliva and a bit of your air from coming out, but it doesn't stop the microscopic virus from getting through, okay? But you can slow it down by wearing a mask and you can slow it down by not coughing or talking with that mask on, okay? Your masks are just a little bit to help slow things down, okay? And to keep you 
conscious, to keep you aware that there's danger out there, okay? That's what these homemade masks do because in the hospitals, we wear the surgical mask or we get fitted for N95. Remember, N95 is the mask that healthcare professionals wear and we get fitted for that so that it can fit tightly around our faces and seal so that, you know, nothing can get in and nothing can get out. What we're doing with these, you know, with these homemade masks is we're trying our best to slow things down. If nothing else, it should help keep you conscious about uh, about your surroundings and how you need to do whatever it is you need to do, get in, get out quickly, and be very, very conscious about the surfaces that you touch and about your hands. And never, ever, ever touch your hands, your mate, uh, face, or your eyes when you're out because if the virus is there, you're giving it a point of entry by touching your eyes or your nose or your mouth. Very sensitive areas uh, that allow for virus uh, point of entry, okay? So hand sanitize. When you leave a grocery store, hear me now, when you leave a grocery store, if they have wipes, take a wipe with you, okay? So you can then wipe off your steering wheel. I wipe off my driver's license if I've had to use that in the store, because if you buy it, wine. They want to see driver's license. So I got to wipe my driver's license off. I lay it on the dashboard and I wipe my uh, my credit card off and lay it on the dashboard and allow it to dry because it's come in contact with their machines and things. And I wipe off my phone uh, because I've had in the store. I minimize what I take in the store with me. Hear me on this. I minimize what I take in the store. First of all, it's usually just me. It's either me or my husband, one of us to go. We don't go together. So I minimize what I take in the store with me. Sometimes I just take my phone because it has a little pouch and I have my, my driver's license and my credit cards all stuffed in there so that I can minimize what my of my personal things that get uh, exposed to the outside, okay? If I do take a purse, I put everything in there and I wear it cross body so that it minimizes the things that it's going to touch when we're out there, okay? Remember what I said about the groceries cart. When you enter a store, just consider the grocery cart dirty. But I give a shout out to Target. They point you in the direction of the carts that they have cleaned, that have come back in. So they disinfect the carts, okay? Remember, when you disinfect something, it takes three to six minutes for that disinfectant to work. It's not immediate. So they wipe it off and they push it to the side at Target and they allow it to dry. Kudos to them. I was just there today and they're doing a fantastic job. They're saying they're clean carts over there. They're wiping down their carts when they come back in from the outside and not allowing you to take a dirty cart. They're cleaning off surfaces after you have done your transaction. They're cleaning off surfaces. The one thing that I did remind them of is that the young lady took her gloves off and then she cleaned the surface and she did hand sanitize and put gloves on. I suggested to her that she leave the gloves on when she cleaned because she's exposing her skin to those chemicals. You hear me? I said, leave the gloves on when you clean. That's what the state surveyors used to tell us in the dial. So you leave your PP on when you're cleaning. So you leave your gloves on when you're cleaning. So you can clean that surface. And then when you're done, you put your, um, you know, your rag in the receptacle, you take your gloves off, you throw them in the garbage, and then you hand sanitize. Okay. And then you put new gloves on to do, you know, your next customer or your next patient. Okay. So you should clean. If you're cleaning a public surface like that, or you're doing cleaning, to minimize your exposure to all these chemicals that we're using now to clean, even if it is something like bleach or something that's been around a long time, it's still exposure, you know, your skin and that exposing your whole system to that chemical, wear gloves, okay? So I suggested to them, I said, hey, you should probably wear gloves because she's like somebody of childbearing age and she's using some chemical in a spray bottle. I, I didn't know what it was. It didn't have a strong smell to it, but still, um, She's there all day, eight, 10 hours, and she's spraying and wiping every time she, you know, has contact with a customer, which is fantastic, but she's exposing uh, her largest organ of her body, her skin, to that chemical. So I just suggested leave your gloves on when you clean, and then once you're done cleaning, take them off, throw them away, do hand sanitize, and then put new gloves on, okay? That's to protect you. Because we're going to be cleaning services for a long time. This isn't going away anytime soon. We have been exposed. We know now that there's germs out there and we need to uh, be cognizant of that, be conscious of that, and take 
uh, and take steps to minimize our exposure. Okay. So just get, you know, if you're going to be doing a lot of cleaning and using bleach and all those kinds of solutions and things like that, wear gloves. Okay. Wear gloves. Um, because in the dialysis program, we always wore gloves or we wore our full PPE when we were cleaning just in case there were any splashing, but exposure. Cause you're talking about hours and hours of having your skin exposed to those chemicals. Um, you want to minimize that so that you can be safe because what's, you know, why not limit your uptake of that chemical? Okay. But I just wanted to pop in and say hello to everybody and, and announce that May 16th, yes, which it is a Saturday, will be the next Get Healthy group. It will be a six week long uh, uh, opportunity to get healthy, to learn what you need to know nutrition wise, habit wise, and to get that mind straight around nutrition and getting healthy. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing starting May 16th. I'm going to be putting some more information up and ways that you can get more information, find out about it. Or if you want to talk to me about it and make sure that it's a good fit for you, um, you can uh, leave a comment in the comment section here. Or when I put up the information uh, tomorrow, the next day, you can take a look at that and uh, sign up if you want to have a conversation with me or, and talk about this upcoming six-week Get Healthy class. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have a suggestion uh, for something that you would like for me to do a presentation about, you know, if you want me to talk about something, I come on a lot of times and I'll talk about infection control just because of the environment that we're in right now. But if you have an interest, if you have a strong interest in something and say, hey, I'm wondering about this, you know, uh, in terms of getting healthy, put in the comments section or message me or, or leave a comment on my page here, the RN Health Coach, so that, you know, I can see that and I'll do my best to accommodate um, doing your uh, your suggested presentation. I love to hear what it is that you would like for me to do a presentation on, okay? So go ahead and leave that in the comment section below here or on my page. And then when I do uh, the live about whatever you asked about as far as getting healthy is concerned, it should be about getting healthy, about getting healthy. Because I love, love, love working with uh, people who know they're pre-diabetic or know they have a predisposure for becoming diabetic or they're type 2 diabetic where they're newly diagnosed or they've been one for a long time and they really want to get healthy to decrease the amount of medications that they're on or something like that. I uh, love working with, you know, with people like that. Um, make sure you put a comment in the comment section or if there's something along those lines that you would like for me to do a live on, put that in the comment section and I will do a live on that too, okay? So thank you guys. Thank you so much, Rixie. Thank you so much, Chatone, uh, for popping in and you know and commenting. I appreciate that. It's a little chilly here today. I had to put my sweatshirt on. I went out and it was like, it's only 45 here today and I was 45. The other day, it was 78. Today, it's 45, and it's supposed to be no higher than 50 all week, so had to go back to the sweatshirts and things. It's a little chilly outside, uh, but whatever. It's Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo to you. I hope you're celebrating with someone uh, and having a great time, you know, at home, at home, where it's safe and, um, and, and being healthy, okay? So I will talk to you guys really, really soon. I'll probably be back on Thursday for my usual uh, Q and A, uh, get healthy. It'll be at seven thirty, uh, Central Standard Time, uh, right here. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me, and stay safe and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.